Hey, this is Scott at Coffee Props. Thanks for joining me. We are going to do a pour over demonstration of V60. And you've probably seen or done a V60 before, but this is for those who have been unable to figure out the V60. Now there are seven things you're gonna need. The first is, of course, your beans. Then you're gonna need to grind those beans. You're gonna need to weigh the beans, so you're gonna need a scale. You're gonna need a V60 vessel of some kind. You're gonna need a filter. You're going to need a source for heating your water and pouring it. And of course, the vessel you're going to drink from. Now, if you're doing math, that's only six things. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, there are eight things, and that is a community. You need to join a community of other coffee lovers so you can talk about uh, the variations of a V60 and other brew methods. So we're going to get started here. First thing we do is we need the right amount of beans. Now I'm going to make two cups, two cups of coffee. So, and I use a uh, 15 to one ratio, which means 30 grams of coffee for 500 grams of water. That's 30 grams of coffee to 500 grams of water. So we're gonna throw that into our scale. We're going to do about 30. I go a little bit more than 30 just because I think there must be some loss in grinding. All right, I'm gonna put this in the grinder now. It's gonna get noisy. That's ground 30 grams of coffee. And uh, the question you might have is, what's the grind size? This particular grinder, which is the Encore for, from Baratza, has anywhere from zero to 30, 40, and I've never gone that far, 40. I usually go about 18 or so, somewhere around there. A lot of that will depend on the the roast itself the beans uh, what you're trying to do with the coffee and like a french press you'd want to go a lot less um you know a lot coarser which means um, a, a lot higher in number um, but again that's a good thing for the community that you can join and talk about uh, the variations that there are in making a cup of coffee. So we got 20 gram, uh, 30 grams of coffee ground and ready. So now we are ready to put our V60 on the scale and our filter we put inside here. Hands are properly washed. And what we do first is we'll take our hot water, which is at 205 degrees, to, uh, 204 or so and we're going to pour some water over the filter to knock out all the paper taste and get that going down through I'm going to go over to the sink dump that water and then I'm going to now that we've got the filter all pre-wetted. We're going to put the beans into the filter and we're going to straighten it out. So get a level, get your coffee level. And um, I'm going to pause here and, and for a second and explain if you just joined us, this is a V60 pour over demonstration. The, the beans, the grinder, the filter, the coffee, the V60, the scale, the hot water, and your mug. 
Those are the seven things. Plus, it's good to be a part of a community that talks about this sort of thing on a regular basis. Okay, so we got coffee in the filter. We're about ready to pour the water over top. But the first thing, you, the, or the main thing you want to do is tear your scale to zero. Tear is another word for set or reset your scale to zero. Okay, so we're going to grab our hot water at about 204 degrees or so. And we're just going to pour over the beans. And then we're going to let it go. And we're going to set the timer for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. You'll see that there's a reaction happening to the coffee beans. That is the release of the gases that are pent up through the roasting process and through the storing process. And it, and it creates a better cup of coffee. This is, a lot, this is the kind of thing that you don't get with a bun automatic coffee maker or a coffee, uh, Mr. Coffee maker in the morning. This V60 thing and, and the, the balloon or the bloom really helps in creating a better cup of coffee. Now, we're about 35, 40 seconds in. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start pouring. And what I like to do is pour in circles from the outside in and then back in from the inside out. Notice the bubbling that's going on. What's happening is when you're pouring this over the, the coffee, what you're doing is you're, the coffee is flowing past every one of those particles of coffee, and it is pulling with it, the water is pulling with it, the flavor from the flakes of beans. So I go inside out, and then outside in. I do a continuous pour until I've filled the filter. I don't want to go over top of the filter edge right here. So I will just keep pouring slowly. And you'll, you'll note that the water that is coming out of the kettle is going to end up down below here. What it does between the tip of the kettle and the bottom of the vessel is that it's pulling, like it's, it's clear water here, it's brown water here. So what's happening is the, all of the flavor is being grabbed by the water on the way through without, and that's what the filter's for, without the actual coffee grounds going with it. So you're actually pulling the flavor from the coffee, which is why it's important to have the right grind size. Because if you go real coarse and you have big pieces of coffee flakes in here, the, the, when the water goes down through it, it's not going to grab as much of the flavor. So the, so the coffee is going to be real weak. Okay, we're going way past 500 because I was talking. But now what we're doing is we're witnessing the extraction of flavor from the coffee beans. They started out as a whole bean, and then that whole bean, if you were to just put a bunch of beans in here and pour water over them, it'd be very, very little flavor. But we have to grind it to create more surface. And that more surface is what gets us our coffee. Now, if I, if I ground this too fine, and it's real, real, real small parts. First of all, it'd take a lot longer because it would clog the bottom of the, the of the V of the of the the uh, V60. That's why they call it a V. All of that coffee would get caught up in this corner here, and it would over extract, and then you would have a much bitter, much more bitter uh, cup of coffee, regardless of how it was roasted or where the origin is. <clears throat> so the coarser the, you are, the under extracted you are, the finer the grind, the more over extracted you are. All right. So you want to find that middle ground. And again, a community would be a good place to, commu to talk about the variations in making a good V60 
cup of coffee. Now you can see here, it, it is slowly going down. Sometimes when you're making a V60, you might pour too fast and then you'll end up with a bunch of coffee on the sides. Um, I like to pour a little slower. Sometimes I'm not patient enough and I'll pour fast and then I'll end up with a lot of coffee grounds on the sides of the filter. What that means is those beans were extracted just a little bit and then they stuck to the edge and there wasn't as much flavor going down through. Uh, so if you, some people will do what is called a pulse pour or, you know, intermittent pour. They'll pour a little bit and some will even take a spoon and stir up the beans and wait for a little bit and then pour some more. Um, that's okay too. The thing is you want to have at the end, your goal is to have a flat uh, bunch of extracted coffee, which we have here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's, it's pretty flat. Not a lot of coffee beans or uh, residue on the sides here. Um, but now we're just letting the few extra drops go. And we, let me see if I can turn that sideways and show you. So you can see it dripping. This is why they, uh, some coffee shops will call this the drip coffee. And depending on how anal retentive you are, you might wait until there are no more waves in the coffee down below, which means every drop has been dropped. For those of you who are impatient for a cup of coffee like I am, you'll probably go a lot sooner. All right. So we put that in the sink. <clears throat> now you just kind of swirl it around because you want to get a little bit more of that body and that flavor as much as you can. Some people will wait a little bit and let it cool just a bit so it's not at its highest temperature because they claim it smell it, it tastes better. Um, I don't know enough about that, but that's what they say. So there's our cup of coffee. And it's pretty simple. And I'm, uh, I'm going to let you taste first. What do you think? Taste okay? I'll taste it. All right, y'all. That is a V60. Again, what the, you need eight things. You need coffee, of course. You need to grind that coffee. You need to weigh it before you grind it. You need a place to filter or extract the coffee. You need the hot water. You need a vessel to drink from. That's seven. And then you need a coffee community where you can talk about your experiences. It is so delicious. Hey, um, J-L-C-A-S-A-B-A-L. So you like it, huh? What, we're, what, we're, uh, what we just created or brewed was Ethiopian Guji natural process from Branch Street Coffee. And it's a local coffee shop where we're getting our coffee at this moment. There are a lot of different coffee shops we, we, uh, we get our coffee from. But this one is particularly from Branch. Thank you from the guys of Branch and the ladies. That's it. That's your V60. I hope it was informative to you. Let me know in a comment, uh, in, a, in a direct message, that this was helpful to you. And I do invite you to go over to coffeeprops.com. We are developing a community of coffee lovers worldwide so that we can share and, um, and, and have a better experience with coffee that goes way beyond an Instagram account. Um, Mick Kellyum, it's 9 p.m. where you're at. You must be in, say, Hong Kong, maybe. And you should have coffee at 9 p.m. Here, here's another cup, another drink. Go ahead. Oh, isn't that good? Thanks for joining us. I'll talk to you later.